The Metroidvania genre has been mostly dead for a bit now. Every once in a while someone will come along and revisit it, often in the indie space. Games like Axiom Verge and Ori are carrying the torch while the namesakes of the genre, Metroid and the later Castlevania games, have largely disappeared even in non-Metroidvania form. But a lot of those indie games tend to trade on that nostalgia maybe a bit too much. That's fine and it definitely works and it's fun to play them, but they also don't do a ton interesting or new. There are certainly exceptions, however, and one of them is the game I'm highlighting this week, Headlander. The core idea of Headlander is pretty simple. You're a floating head that can land in bodies. Those bodies give you different abilities and allow you access to different color-coded doors, trading out the item-based access gating you'd expect to see in a Metroidvania for one based on you finding bodies. It's largely similar given that certain bodies only really show up at certain times and in certain places, but it still feels unique in a way that collecting the super missile equivalent in order to open a new set of doors simply doesn't at this point. There are also the requisite health and energy pickups scattered around the world, hidden in vents that often require you to solve some sort of puzzle or execute on navigation perfectly, very much in the Metroidvania tradition. With the addition of a talent tree, Headlander also throws in something relatively new, though increasingly common in the genre, that allows you to gradually do things like increase the amount of damage you do with your basic attacks. So in a lot of ways, it's a whole lot like just about every other Metroidvania you've ever played, but it does have some distinguishing features that set it apart that make it more than just another one of those. Most notably, of course, is this game's style. One of the things Double Fine has always been incredible at is creating games with cohesive themes, and Headlander's 1950s retrofuturism is no exception. From the lava lamps to the shag carpeting, everything has just enough of a futuristic and robotic tinge to make it feel just right. There's also that comedy I've come to expect from Double Fine games, and it runs throughout the entire thing, mostly in the form of the different AIs you encounter. Every part of the space station has its own snarky AI, whether it's the door AI or the mapping AI. They're all their own amusing characters. Just about the only AI that doesn't come across as funny is the primary antagonist AI, Methuselah, which doesn't have much of a character at all other than being vaguely evil. And the plot is certainly the game's biggest weak point. I'm not necessarily saying that Metroidvanias need a plot, they most certainly don't. But there's a difference between not having a plot and trying to have one and making it exceedingly uninteresting, which is admittedly somewhat unusual for a Double Fine game. In fact, besides the comedy aspect, Headlander is the opposite of a lot of the usual fare from them. It plays a lot better than I'd expect a Double Fine game to, with a lot of strength in its head-popping mechanics, but it's far weaker on the story side of things. Still, despite that bit of weirdness, Headlander is absolutely a fantastic Metroidvania game with just enough twists, both stylistic and mechanical, to make it unique, interesting, and something I absolutely recommend checking out. On In Case You Missed It, I look at games that were either ignored when they came out or have been forgotten since. Games that a lot of people have missed. If you like that idea, be sure to subscribe so you can see the latest videos. If you like this video in particular, be sure to hit that like button, and thanks for watching.